We're here to put the flag up on the anniversary of the crash of the B-17 in 1945. It was flying from Ridgewell in um, Essex, I think, to Nuts Corner in Belfast, with 31 people on board going on for a weekend's leave. It was just before the end of the war. Operations had more or less ceased, but it somehow got off course and crashed into the top of the mountain. But it was a fine day, except for that there was a cap of cloud on top of the mountain. And obviously the pilot can't see down because he's sitting there so he can just see ahead so all he would see was fog which he'd think was a cloud into the cloud and that was it I would be 11 and a half I think and we heard there'd been a plane crash here so we got on our bikes <laughs> myself my cousin and my brother and we set off from Laxey down to the bottom of the hill here and came straight up to the crash looking for bullets. This must have been two or three days after the crash. The big tailpiece that was still in one piece had gone by then. All the bodies had been removed and everything like that. But all we were looking for was, well, treasures, you see, that sort of thing. <laughs> Small bits everywhere, right down the mountain oxygen bottles and uh, insulating stainless steel um, ammunition chutes uh, for, you know that fed they were flexible so and, and they were there was bits of that lying down there too but mainly it, most of it crashed up into the mountain here and, and burnt out you see in fact I, I read somewhere it's possibly the most loss of life on any military aircraft that's high ground crashes as they call them is possibly the biggest loss of life in the British Isles. A picture of one of the passengers I think it was and Ivor Ramsden at the museum, the aviation museum, he was looking at this photograph and somebody had handed in this ring only three or four years ago that they'd found up here and this fellow's sitting there and you can see on his hand a ring and it's the same ring. He found out where the fellow came from anyway, wanting to find out whose it was and did they want it back and never got a reply. I actually came up and put the sockets in the ground and got the poles up here. My brother brought me up on the, in his Land Rover, you see, with all the gear. And we got the stonemason from Castletown to make the plaque. And when, when we put the plaque on the rock, there was about 60 people up here, and the vicar had a, pr a printed out a sheet of what was going on, you see. And at the end of it, his son counted the sheets that were left over. And there was 31 the same number of sheets left over as there was on the aeroplane. And my wife says, those sheets were for those people. Mm -hmm. The aircraft, a Boeing B-17G Flying Fortress bomber of the 534th Bombardment Squadron, took off from RAF Ridgewell, Essex, England at 8am with 31 military personnel on board on a week's leave to Northern Ireland. At 10.15am, the aircraft was approaching the northeast coast of the Isle of Man. Harold Ennett of the Crofts, Hibernia, was working that morning at Marakiao Farm as a tractor driver. He noticed a four-engine, silver-coloured aircraft flying in from the coast. He could see clearly the star of the US Air Force on its wing as it passed. He stared at it in terror as he realised it was flying straight towards the mist-covered slopes of North Peru, and in an instant, 31 young lives were lost. It was the deadliest aviation accident in the island's history. The men's bodies were flown back to the American military cemetery at Maidenley near Cambridge. It was the largest funeral ever seen there. 
1995, this memorial was erected at the crash site by Mackled Commissioners in conjunction with the Manx Aviation Preservation Society. On the anniversary each year, the American flag is flown at the site. The men of Flying Fortress B-17G will not be forgotten. I've come up here some days and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face and I've been here at the time the plane actually struck the mountain and I've been here sitting in the fog half expecting to see some of the Americans come out of the fog like you know just get that feeling there they're coming out of the fog <laughs> 